Representative, if you don't mind, for those that are unfamiliar with the decision that came out of JCAR yesterday, I believe, um, the dual use licenses, explain that a little bit. So under the initiated statute, uh, issue two from last fall, there are several classes of licenses that occur. There are medical license, there are standalone recreational licenses, and there are dual licenses. And the first round that's able to be applied for and granted are dual use licenses for those who currently have a license for medical. So what happened yesterday was the rules from the Department of Commerce that outline the application, uh, the application process and the timeline for folks that already have an existing medical license to be able to participate in the adult use or recreational program. Uh, the rules outlining that were approved by JCAR yesterday, which is the Joint Committee on Agency Rule Review. Uh, that means they are able to move forward and they will have a deadline of June 7th is the latest date that the applications will be available for the current medical retail sites to apply for a dual use license, allowing them to also sell um, adult use or recreational uh, cannabis products. Uh, it's anticipated that the application will be available sometime before that, the June 7th is the at the latest date. Uh, so it's anticipated it, it will be available a few days before that. Um, and it will be a fairly simple application because the application and the qualifications to be a medical is so stringent that the additional requirements to add the uh, adult use um, non-medical is, is fairly minor. So it should be a fairly simple application. Uh, the anticipation is that a number of, of the entities currently selling um, in the medical market will uh, and have been planning on selling uh, recreationally as well and are just awaiting the applications to fill them out and we'll get them in quickly. We've been assured by Commerce that they will move as quickly as possible to review and approve those that meet the, the qualifications. Um, so we anticipate because of what happened yesterday, because it went through JCAR without objection, um, that we will potentially have legal um, cannabis sales without a medical card in Ohio at retail sites by mid-June. Wow, so pretty soon. Pretty soon. There, we had seen a report that had more than 40 municipalities, cities, uh, towns, that had put a moratorium on sales, essentially to try and see when things would become a little bit more clear. With decisions like this, are you hoping that then a lot of these municipalities that were a little unsure about what was going on, now they see that there is a legitimate path and it's a pretty clear path? I'm hoping, as with a lot of the areas, as we move from a solely medical to uh, a recreational marijuana, I think there are a lot of folks uh, who are concerned and seeing potential problems. And as the program rolls out, uh, I'm hoping, and so far it has been the case, that those fears are proven um, uh, not valid, that these nightmare scenarios don't occur. Uh, you know, Ohio is not the first state to do this. So we've looked at states that have had issues. Uh, and the initiated statute was drafted in a way to protect against that. And certainly the rules that are going through commerce now are protecting against some of the things that, that folks are afraid of uh, that were opposed to recreational use. Um, and I think as it rolls out, communities will lose the fear that they have. It's a fear of the unknown. As it becomes known, they'll realize it's not um, the boogeyman they're afraid it is. So these approved medical marijuana facilities, I'm gonna guess a lot of them are going to be willing to sell uh, non -recre or for recreational purposes. 
when would we see just these standalone recreational facilities potentially be able to open? Well, those rules haven't been drafted yet, but I would anticipate early next year, January or February, um, possibly sooner. Um, I think we're, we're ahead of schedule, ahead of where people thought we were. Um, but those rules have not come before JCAR yet. They, they aren't far enough in the process to get to that point. So we're at least 90 days out, probably a little bit more. So you're saying by January of next year for opening or for the rules to be drafted? I Possibly for opening it, 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 really, that's the earliest I would anticipate. And, and that is not a date. There, there is not a date that I can say on this date it will happen. There's a lot of variables between now and then. But is, like, are, is there anything kind of in the movement right now? Uh, you, obviously, you yourself as a lawmaker, have there been discussions to get those discussions to begin? Uh, or is it kind of a wait and see to see how it does with those dispensaries? Well, the, the discussions are, are ongoing in, um, in the Department of Commerce. They're, they're actively drafting. So uh, it is moving forward. But under the initiated statute, there's a, an order that it gets rolled out. And the dual use is the first group that can, can go to market, if you will. Representative, my last question for you. Obviously, very encouraging to see the, the pieces start to happen and, and things start to slowly move forward here. Uh, what would you yourself want to say to these people that have been kind of unsure of how things are going? You're, it's a little ahead of schedule, as you mentioned. Um, so what do you want that to say about the process and, and how thoughtful it has been to make sure everything is right, but also to make sure it's on time? I, I, I think the proof is in the pudding. Um, the process is moving along very well, very professionally. Um, and, and it's an unusual word to use with this program, but very conservatively. And I think the folks that were opposed to issue two, that, that are opposed to adult use, are going to see that it is not the Pandora's box they were afraid it was. And each step of the way, uh, I, I hope that what we do as legislators and what the rulemakers do and what the, the folks that have the licenses do will continue to prove that uh, and prove that in Ohio, we can do it right and not have some of the mistakes and problems that other states have seen. Uh, and so far, so good. I'm very proud of uh, everyone involved in the, in the movement. They're, they're being very responsible, very respectful, uh, and we haven't had any issues yet. And I, I hope it stays that way. Um, and, and if it does, as a legislature, we can go back and make changes. Uh, but at this point, there hasn't been a need to. Uh, and I'm very excited that, uh, and, and again, very proud of the administrators, the politicians, and, and the folks involved in the movement, the current processors and, and growers and, and retailers for, for having done, uh, for doing the right thing and doing it well.